When is the right time to hire a virtual assistant for your business? If you're too early, there won't be enough work for you to give to a virtual assistant and you'll be dwindling away your business profits while they sit down and don't understand what they need to do. If you're too late, then you'll be stressing out. You'll be working really hard in the business instead of on the business so you won't be able to grow and scale that business. So it's important you get the right timing when you hire your virtual assistant. And in today's video, we'll talk about when is the exact right moment to hire your first virtual assistant. And by the end of the video, you'll also have tips and tricks to make sure that your first hire is a winner. If you're new to the channel, my name's James Erdley. I run multiple e-commerce businesses that have generated over a million pounds in sales in the last few years. And I also coach people through the Dropship Unlock program and with weekly videos on my YouTube channel. So if you like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. And now let's dive into when is the exact right time to hire a virtual assistant. Before you jump into hiring a virtual assistant, you need to consider whether your business needs one in the first place. So let's run through some of the benefits of a virtual assistant so you understand what it is that you can achieve with hiring them. And then you'll have more knowledge to make that decision about when to hire. So the first real benefit of a virtual assistant is the time that you save. So when we talk about hiring somebody in your business or hiring a new team member, whether that's a virtual assistant or anyone, what the real benefit should be of hiring someone is that they take work off your plate so that your time is saved. Now that is huge for a business, especially new businesses, because you're wearing all of the hats when you first start in any business. As an entrepreneur, you have to be the chief marketing officer, the chief financial officer, you have to be in charge of operations, you have to be head of customer service, and you're wearing all of these hats at once. So the first thing to do when you hire somebody is get that relief of giving away some of those hats. And the first one that often gets given away is the customer service, and rightly so, because being on the front line of your business isn't something that's expected of you as a business owner. Although it's fantastic to serve the customers directly, it's not sustainable because the time that you will spend serving customers would be better spent elsewhere growing the business. It's that old saying of don't work in the business, you should be working on the business. Otherwise, it will never grow. If you're spending far too much time in the weeds, dealing with one customer at a time, you're never going to really make the huge differences to your business that you need to make. And that's the real first consideration of hiring a VA. It's the time that you'll save. And secondly, it's the focus that you'll gain back. Because you don't have that time spent now on every part of the business, you're able to get your focus back. Your mind is now able to go in depth on certain areas and you're not spread so thin. So then with that extra focus, you can be more effective with the decisions you make. You can be more effective with how you spend your time and you can make sure that you're spending your time on income generating tasks. A lot of the time, new business owners, they're focused on the day-to-day -day running of a business. So with a business like mine, an e-commerce business, the day-to-day -day of running a business would be answering customer phone calls or live chat messages. Now, that has to be done when you first get started, but over the long run, customers aren't expecting the business owner to pick up the phone, and you shouldn't do that as well. As a business owner, you should focus on the income generating tasks. So they are tasks that you know directly lead to generating income for your business. So that's marketing, that's sales, that's making sure that you've got a high quality range of products. It's not answering somebody's question about when their product is going to arrive. So you need to make that distinction between income generating tasks and day-to-day -day running of a business and make sure your time as the business owner is spent on income generating tasks and make sure the day-to-day -day business running tasks are done by somebody else. And they're the benefits that virtual assistants give you. They allow you that focus, they allow you to be more effective and they give you more time so that you can focus on income generating tasks. Now, signs that it's time to hire a virtual assistant is growing pains. You'll start to feel pains and it will come from the business and it will come from internally. You'll feel stress and pressure. I know I certainly did. When your business grows and you've got more customers, you've got more sales, you've got more complexity within your business as it scales and grows naturally, you'll start to feel pulled in every different direction. And there'll be more inquiries, there'll be more sales, and so you'll start to feel like your time is being eaten up more and more by just daily running tasks. Another sign is that your business will start to plateau or the growth will start to slow down. We might even go backwards in terms of growth. And that's a clear sign. Your business is waiting for you to take the next step 
to get to the next level. Because what often happens is when you're so busy with everything that's happening day to day, you're not able to see the opportunities about how to grow and scale. So you miss out on growth and your business will start to plateau. I know that my business was starting to flatline or plateau when I was getting to a position where I was so busy day to day and I wasn't spending any time on growing the business. And then as soon as I hired a virtual assistant, my revenue tripled within the next month because straight away I was able to allocate my time to tasks that I knew would generate more revenue, generate more income for the business and I would leave the day-to-day running tasks to a virtual assistant. Now let's talk about the criteria that I have for when to hire a virtual assistant with a first time hire. So the first thing to do as a general rule is that the profit from your business should easily sustain a virtual assistant's wage. You shouldn't have to go into a loss to cover a virtual assistant. Instead, the business should be self-sustaining where you can reinvest some of the profit into hiring a virtual assistant. And my criteria and a general rule of thumb is that your business profit should be at least two times the wage of the virtual assistant that you're looking to bring in. Now, the beauty of hiring a virtual assistant from a different country is that the cost of living is a lot lower in other countries other than Western countries like the UK or the US. And so you don't have to be generating that much profit to be able to hire your first virtual assistant. For a customer service virtual assistant, you probably expect to pay them when they first start with you about $500, $500 to 550 US dollars per month. So as long as your business is exceeding a thousand pounds or 1,200 US dollars every month, I'd say that's a good time to think about hiring your first virtual assistant. The second sign is that you're really feeling those growing pains and you're really dreading working on your business because you're so busy with the day-to-day tasks. Another sign for you to quickly hire a virtual assistant if that position feels familiar. And another sign is that your personal bandwidth is feeling full. If you're starting to feel like you're burnt out at the end of days and you're not able to give your business as much attention as it deserves, then that's another sign to hire a virtual assistant. Now, I wish I had this video earlier because I hired too late. So don't make the same mistake as me. I waited too long because I knew that I could cover the daily running tasks of of running the business. I didn't think I needed a virtual assistant. So I waited way too long, you know, far too many months went by while I was feeling busy and I was spending too much time on non-income generating tasks. The profit in the business was there and I waited too long for hiring a virtual assistant. So my advice is as soon as you feel those three factors, as soon as you're in that position, quickly hire a virtual assistant and you'll be able to scale your business and spend less time working on the difficult day-to-day running tasks at the same time. So the tasks that you can outsource to a virtual assistant The first one I'd recommend is the customer service. So for any e-commerce business owner selling products, then it's customer phone calls, it's answering live chats, it's answering emails from customers. It's also fulfilling orders. So when you receive an order for your business, whether that's through Shopify, then you can get them to forward that email over to your supplier and they can handle the order fulfillment process. They're the two main roles to start with, which will take a lot off your plate, but over time, you'll be able to train them and upskill them to do other tasks as well. So things like social media management for your business, they can start to schedule posts and also eventually you can get them to start reporting on the key metrics for you so that it's really easy for you to see how your business is performing. I hired first for customer service agents and over time they were able to speed up how fast they work on the customer service when they understand the business and then naturally you can upskill them by passing on different roles to them. But first of all, customer service is the key really to get you out of the day-to-day tasks. So if you've decided that you need to hire a virtual assistant quickly, then I'll tell you a little bit now about how to find a really good virtual assistant. So where I use it is a website called onlinejobs.ph. You can go onto that website and you can search for customer service agents or you can post a job. And I recommend you post a job and you lay out all of the different tasks that they're going to do, the order fulfillment for your business, tell them about the hours that you expect them to do, which I recommend would be full-time, and then you set the wage. And there is a scale on onlinejobs.ph to tell you what the average wages are for certain roles, so you can really just use that, and you can find out what people are paid. Now, onlinejobs.ph is a Filipino website, And so you'll be looking to hire Filipino workers, Filipino customer service agents from that website. 
and I'd wholeheartedly recommend this. In the Philippines, that's where a lot of huge companies like Amazon get their customer service. And there are people over there that are really hardworking, cheerful people that are a joy to work with and they work really hard. But because the cost of living is so much lower over there, the amount that you'll pay to a customer service agent from the Philippines is a lot lower than a Western country. So I'd absolutely recommend doing that. Now, a little tip for your job post is to add an Easter egg to that job post. So that means add something in the requirements of the job post that they would need to read it all in full and have really good attention to detail to notice. So for example, add to the job post that you need them to include a photo of a purple giraffe or something like that with their application. That way you can start to sift through the hundreds of applications that you'll get and you can just look for the ones that provide the purple giraffe because they'll be the people that have got good attention to detail, are really serious about the role, and they'll start to self-select themselves as who's most appropriate to be hired for that role. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's an important one because when you hire a virtual assistant, it's crucial, and if you make the right hire and you bring someone on board, it can make a huge difference to your business. With that said, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button, and the next video I recommend for you to watch is a breakdown for how you can get to £10,000 per month with an e-commerce business and I'll take you through the step-by-step -step actions and the numbers that you need to know. So click that video while it's on screen at the moment before it disappears and I'll see you in the next video.